This video is brought to you by LogRocket, the front-end performance monitor that records videos of user sessions along with logs and network data, surfacing problems and revealing the root cause of every bug. Try it today at LogRocket.com slash YT. Hey everyone, in this video I'm going to take you through how you can create a nice animation with React hooks and uh, using SVGs. Uh, I'm going to have a link to the starter sandbox and the complete sandbox in the description. My recommendation would be to uh, follow along with the starter sandbox and then um, and then uh, they can look at the complete one at the end but you should have the complete one at the end if you follow along with everything I'm doing here. Uh, there's a small bit of setup we have here you can see I'm using a thing called use ref from react. Use ref, uh, we use it to get a uh, reference to elements on the page like we do the react way so to speak. So you can see I have mushroom 1, mushroom 2, I have the same for pepperoni and I have the same for spinach. The, so uh, each pepperoni has a class name of pepperoni, each mushroom has a class name of mushrooms. You're going to be seeing in a minute why we have class names on them. Uh, there's not really much else here with the setup except for we have three buttons here that we will be adding on click handlers to. The first thing we need to do is we need to remove the ingredients from our pizza. Because I want to kind of, for you to imagine, this is what we're building this into an app where the user gets to make their own pizza. So you clearly don't want uh, the ingredients being added already. So what we need to do is we need to bang over to our, bang over to CSS file, and target each each ingredient. So in spinach, and you want to use you want to use transform here. And you want to use then uh, translate y value. So that's saying I want to transform, translate y. So I'm going to move these things up. How much I'm going to move them up? I'm going to move them about, we say like 410 pixels. Okay, so that is good. You can see now we have a blank pizza. So we can start adding in some functionality. So we can take these one at a time. So the first thing we need to do is add spinach, I guess. So we can do this. So now we've declared a function for adding spinach. We can then add this as into our on click. So add spinach. Cool. Uh, now we need to add in the functionality. You can see up here I have this thing called Tweenmax installed by Greensock. I really hope everyone knows Greensock, but you're going to get to know it in this in this video anyway. So the first thing we need to do for adding spinach is we need to get a reference to each one of our spinaches so spinach one dot current dot current is the actual element itself so that's what we're going to be targeting this this is a little bit tedious because there's so many so many spinaches we didn't really have to use a unique one for each one but uh, I like to do it anyway because they can do a cool uh, stagger effect on it which you will see also and finally we have spinach six. Thankfully, code sandbox form as this for us. So now we can use Tweenmax, which we have imported up here, uh, and we had the dependency added here. So if you're following along with the starter code sandbox, you're going to have green sock already added for you. So Tweenmax dot two. The first thing we pass in is the elements we want to animate. This first argument can take in a single element or it can take in an array of elements. Okay, in our case it's an array of elements. The next thing we say is how long do we want it to be? So in our case we say one second. Then you pass in an object saying what you want to animate. So I want to put the Y position back to zero. I also want to put a bounce on it. Okay, so you do ease, quotes, you do bounce and you do dot ease out that will give a nice bounce effect when it drops down and the last thing you want to do is you want to put a stagger actually we'll show you what stagger does so if we do add spinach you see you can see the way they're falling there but uh, what we want to do is we want them to kind of stagger as they fall because it looks a little bit better so in the new version of green sock you actually add stagger in here before you used to do it you used to do dot stagger too but now you add it in here instead so you do 0 0.1 which is the level of the stagger so you can see the way they're falling down differently okay we want to do now the same thing as above for adding our mushrooms like so uh, const mushroom 
Uh, I think we have two mushrooms, so we can do mushroom one, dark current, mushroom two, dark current. Uh, we can essentially copy what we have here and do this and add mushrooms. I want to add that as the on click here, like so. Now you can click it. It adds the mushrooms. You want to do the exact same thing then for adding pepperoni. See here, when a good rule of thumb of programming is if you're uh, copying and pasting functions a lot, you should probably make it into one function. So we do, we'll do that in one minute just when we get our animation working the way we want. Pepperoni 1, Pepperoni 2. And then we have pepperoni tree dot current. And this is going to give out to me because mushrooms are not defined. Do this. And I think you can guess what we have to do next. We need to add in add in the click handler here. And this is add pepperoni. Okay. This sometimes it just kind of kind of bomb out in a little bit. And if it does, you can just click refresh up here. So add spinach. Add our mushrooms, add our pepperoni. So next thing we need to do is we need to refactor what we did up here because we're, we're essentially duplicating everything we have. So what we need to do is we need to do a single function. So in our case it can be const do animation. We're taking a type, so the type here is going to be either it's mushroom or it's, uh, it's pepperoni or it's spinach. So the next thing we need to do is we need to declare let elements. Elements is what we're going to animate. So you can do like an if type equals spinach. If type is equal to spinach, we want to set our elements. So we can take this rather than type it all out again. So it would be so doing this. We we'll be doing this. Okay. And then say else if a uh, type is equal to mushroom, mushroom if it's spell. Ah, uh, there we go. So this is the same as we have above. So we can just take this and we do elements is equal to this. And then if it's not any of them, it has to be the, the pepperoni. So we can come up here. Uh, we can take this and change this to elements. Okay, what we want to do then is we can take this code. We can take this code here, put it in here, and this will be our elements. What we need to do is we need to update our our handler here so it passes in an argument so in this case it's spinach I copy this down here what's my if my if's on mushrooms my if is on the singular so add mushroom and then this we can put in really anything here because it's in the else but we'll do it right way so pepperoni pepperoni yep okay uh, I should be then able to delete these guys, which will clean up a code a nice bit. Save, add spinach, add mushrooms, add pepperoni. Uh, that's, as, that's the animation done. But if we were building this for an app, we probably want to also uh, be able to remove ingredients. Because if you're ordering a pizza and you add mushrooms and you go, Oh no, I hate mushrooms. You're going to want to be able to... Um, be able to remove them so to remove them we're gonna to have to use something in react called that uh, use state use state is way is a way of adding state to your functional components before if you want to add a state if you want to add state to a functional component you, need, you needed to make it a class but you don't anymore so the syntax is okay first you need to import it so use state the, the syntax then is so we do a const the name of our state and the function that will update the state 
So this is similar to when you're updating state in the class-based components, where you want a uh, re-render to happen, okay? So what you want to do is you use state, you pass in, we're passing an object, the, what we're passing here is the, the default value for our state. A lot of times you're going to leave this blank, but for us, we are not. We're going to, you, we're going to say add it. So what we're saying here is have these been added. And then on the initial render of our component, these are not going to be added. So add it, set, add it, mushroom. I typed in mushroom twice there. So this should be spinach. So kind of what we're trying to achieve here is when they click add, will update our state to say that this has been add, add has been added. So the place we need to do that is in our do animation function. So let's think about what we need to do. We need to first check here if it's if it's been added. So we can do something like this. So what I'm saying here is if So if it's been if it's not added, then we do this animation. We'll drop it down. So we do add spinach. Now you see when I click add spinach, now nothing is happening because it's already been uh, it's already been added. And if it's not been added, we essentially want to do do the opposite of what we have up here. So we put this back to the value we have in our CSS, which is minus four ten. You're not really going to want to bounce. Uh, you're going to want to stagger. Uh, we probably change this to zero point three, so three hundred milliseconds. And then, when we we need to check, we need to basically do added type. So say added type here is mushroom. Is equal to the opposite of itself. So we're basically saying if if it was false, set the true. If it was true, set the false. And then we want to use our nice function we have above, which is the set added. We want to get our previous state. So we're choosing normally, normally the good good rule of thumb is just call it prev state. And we want to do add it and spread the spread the previous state. Okay, so let's see is this working and then we can go I go through it again add okay and remove okay so what's happening is we're first checking if it's added if it's not added we drop it down if it is added we pop it up and then we want to set it to the opposite of itself so if mushroom is already added then we set it to false okay so and then we go in here and we pass a function to our set added and we pass in our new added object and we spread the old added object because we're only updating one uh one value at a time so the problem we have at the moment now is when we add this still says add you know it should say remove so you can do add it pass in spinach so saying if spinach is added would it be actually if spinach is not added you want to say add uh, or else you want to say remove spinach like so okay yeah perfect you want to give the rest of them down here below the two the uh the same treatment so add mushroom remove mushroom we can delete this then and then here uh, you can take this, paste in here, here, paste in here, make that lowercase. Okay, so add spinach, add mushroom, add pepperoni, and you can see we have our remove. So again, we're using use state up here, and we're creating an added object, which is this. Because initially none of these are added, and then set added is what we're using to update it. And then down here we're setting this to the opposite of itself. This may be a little bit confusing, but the more you do these animations, and you kind of want to trigger one thing to be the opposite of itself, you'll get into the, the hang of writing this. 
and then once we have our new object this could be like pepperoni is now true we can call it set edit and pass in a function to it that will give in our new object and then spread the old object that is really all there is to this uh to this animation but it's really really nice and it will fall really well in a in a food application or something so that brings this tutorial to an end it's only 15 minutes long we went through a lot but hope you were able to keep up if you weren't able to keep up you can just leave a comment with any questions or anything thanks very much